Welcome to the video. So today's video, we've got quite a controversial topic and I'm sure that this video is probably gonna ruffle a few feathers. So the idea of the video is we're gonna do two tests to test the speed and also the strength of the plaster after using additives. Most of us are used to using additives in render, which has been commonplace for years. Um, but now we're starting to use additives in skim, which is obviously a new thing, uh, but it seems to be taking off quite well. They're becoming very, very handy tools if people want to get a little patching job done in a short space of time. They'll use a bit of half time or speedy set. And if they've got something like, you know, a large ceiling or a big, big job on and you really want to get a massive gauge on, then a lot of people are just using the, uh, the extra time or the slow set. So the point of this video is to test out four additive products. Uh, we've got two retarders and we've got two accelerators. The two accelerators are half time and speedy set and the two retarders are extra time and slow set. Now some of these products have been around for a couple of years and some of them are a little newer. Um, they've been slowly emerging in, on the plastering scene for a while now. Most of you people, anyone who's interested in this video probably knows what they are and has most likely used them. Um, I've used them all for a while and up front I'd like to say that all of these products work. They're all pretty good. Um, so we're not actually looking at whether or not they, they work. We know that they do. Uh, the question just is comparing them, which of them uh, dries quicker or slower depending on what we want. And also, does that affect the strength of the plaster? So we're going to be doing two tests today. We've got the speed test, which is basically putting them against each other. So the retarders will be facing off and so will the accelerators. And then we'll have a control just to compare them to so we know what it's like with no additive as well. And then we'll be doing a strength test where I'll be dropping a pool ball from various heights just to see how that actually affects the strength of the plaster. I've wanted to make this one for a while, but uh, it's one of them that's a bit of a pain in the ass to make, to be honest. And I've really had to put time into figuring out exactly how I'm going to make this fair, controlling for all these different variables and factors to make sure that the only variable really is the actual additives. So anyway, we're gonna crack on with this video. Firstly, let's take a look at what additives are, uh, what's a retarder, what's an accelerator. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's have a look at what the differences are as what they look like um, and, and the actual makeup of the products. So, two companies, four products. On the left hand side of the screen you've got your easy mix products and on the right hand side of the screen you've got your speedy set products. Now the top two are the accelerators and the bottom two are the retarders. So all of these products work in the same way, they're basically little pouches of powder. You open the tops of them, pour them into a bucket, mix them in with the water before you use that water to mix your plaster and it either speeds up your plastering setting time or it slows it down. So let's take a look at what the actual powders look like. So here's the extra time and the half time. Both of these products very crystal like. Uh, and then we have the slow set and the speedy set. Both of these much more fluffy and obviously they contain fibers. Here's a comparison of the two retarders and here's a comparison of the two accelerators. So apart from the speedy set products containing fibers making it look a lot more fluffy and a little bit different, um, the only other real difference that I've noticed right away is the fact that the speedy set products have a little resealable lip on the pouches in case you don't want to use it all in one go, whereas the easy mix products don't. So now I've seen what the products look like, let's move on to the first test, test number one. The speed test. Welcome to the arena. So here we have 3 mil thin coat beads made into 30 cm by 30 cm squares just to ensure consistency for each of the plasters. We're going to dilute the additives into the recommended amount of water firstly to make sure that this is a fair test. So the accelerators are diluted into 5 litres of water and the retarders are diluted into 10 litres of water. So with that all measured out, it's time to pour the additives into their buckets and then whisk together the additives with the water, making sure we wash the drill between each mix just to make sure there's no cross-contamination. Once this is all nicely mixed, it's time to move on to measuring out the water and plaster. So basically we use these plastic cups. Each bucket gets its own cup to avoid cross-contamination, but it's two parts water to four parts plaster. I did a test run of this firstly and that was the perfect ratio it turned out so that's why we chose that. 
So we get rid of the buckets now and just leave the mixing buckets and also bring in a control bucket which we just add plain water to. And finally the multi finish which we'll be using the same bag to mix all of our plasters. So now we're ready, let's get a timer up there and off we go. So we're mixing the control first just to make sure that there's no hiccups with the mix consistency and assuming this goes well that we then get cracking with the rest of them. So the plan is to mix up as fast as possible. Uh, the reason being is that there's the, the less time between each mix the better and between each mix everything will be washed uh, off in a massive bucket of water that I'd got. It was much larger than one of these little buckets just to make sure we fully get the plaster off of the tools and everything like that between each mix. So nine and a half minutes, uh, that's the time between the first and last one mixed so it's worth bearing that in mind as we go on. Obviously it's impossible to mix all these five up at the same time but this is about as good as we've got so bear that number in mind. And remember we mix the retarders up first which are the two at the back and then we mixed up the accelerators last so that they're as close together as each other as possible. So let's get cracking with the first coat. So we start with the control nice and easy just using the little uh, beads just to gauge the thickness make sure it's consistent and then we start with slow set then extra time and then half time and speedy set. Right away I noticed that the the plasters actually felt wetter in the retarders. Uh, I felt a lot runnier. The control was somewhere in the middle and the two accelerators were definitely firmer in the bucket. Uh, especially half time, that definitely seemed to be firmer right away. For whatever that's worth. As you can see there, that's been putting the second coat on. And you can see the difference between the speedy set and the half time. So there's the speedy set looking pretty wet. And the control looking pretty wet. The half time, not quite as much moisture there, definitely less wet. And then the slow set and half time are pretty piss wet through. So, first trial. We're using a steel trial for the first trial. And then right away, we're giving the half time about 10 minutes after the first trial and giving it a second trial because it was so dry. So, as you can see, I've marked down number one underneath all of those to say that they've had the first trial the bottom two are still far too wet so that's the speedy set as you can see quite a bit of moisture and then the half time almost no moisture so definitely the half time here of the two accelerators is going the quickest and then if you look down there we've still got very very wet down in the retarders. So the second trial for the speedy set and the control. Speedy set and the control not too far apart, very similar which was a little surprising. But there we go and finally the first trial for the slow set and extra time coming in about an hour and 20 minutes. And then at an hour and 35 minutes, we are crossing the half time. So this is, this is game over. So we have our winner out of the accelerators. An impressive one hour, 36 minutes from start to finish. And close up, you can see that the half time is definitely a, a lot more dry than the speedy set and the control. So if we do look down here, still very wet on the for the two retarders, as you'd expect. So we're just crossing the speedy set at one hour fifty-seven minutes. In the second place, about twenty minutes behind the, the half time, and then the control just behind there, about two hours. I might add that this was a pretty hot day, um, so that may well have affected. Those that, I mean, the control there, that is a pretty quick setting time in general. And that's the second trial for the retarders. And then finally crossing 
2 hours 46 minutes, which is probably a little early to be honest, but I had to call an end to this experiment at some point and uh, in an ideal world I'd have probably waited another 20 minutes or so. And there you can see them just drying with a super time lapse. You can definitely see the difference between the top three and the bottom two. So there you have it, in the speed test we have half time beating speedy set in the battle of the accelerators and extra time has just about edged out slow set in the battle of the retarders. But we know it's not all about setting speeds, this is just test one. So in test two we're doing the strength test and the reason I wanted to do that is because most people or most plasterers will know that if you increase a setting speed you reduce strength. So that's why the guys at Speedy Set have got a formula where they're putting fibres to try to counteract that and be a solution to that problem of, of increasing the brittleness of the, of the plaster. So let's, uh, let's jump over now and enter the strength test. So I'll quickly explain how this is going to work. I'm going to be dropping a white pool ball from three different heights onto each of the samples. We're going from one meter, 1.5 meters and two meters. So let's get cracking. No pun intended. So starting off with the control, there's the one meter. The 1.5 meter, as you can see a slightly bigger dentation indentation and then the two meter so the slow set remember has got fibers in it and as you can see even though there's dents it's not really broken the surface like it did on the third control drop the extra time right away it breaks the surface and obviously that one hit in the same place but it has really broken through the surface that was a non-fiber one this is half time again no fibers in this one and that last one really broke the surface okay so the speedy set again back with the fibers Yeah, no, no surface breakage with the with the fibrous products. You can see the control there that broke the surface. It's quite obvious. So there's the speedy set and half time. Let's take a look at the speedy set first. And here you'll see, while there is three indentations, there's no surface breakage. Let's shimmy on over to the half time, and you can see well the difference here. Uh, and then the extra time, again, definitely surface breakage there. No doubt about that. And the slow set, again, indentations, but not really any surface breakage, maybe a tiny bit. It definitely reduced. So to finish off this strength test, I'll just tread on them and throw them on the ground a couple of times just to see what happens really. Not that scientific to be honest. So again, one with the fibers there. Ooh, the one without the fibers really explode. Oh, Jesus. Really exploding. So speed is set. Cracking, but not really coming apart. Half time, cracking and similar to extra time, just shattering really. Uh, so there we go. So that concludes the strength test. Obviously got a bit outrageous towards the end, but the results do seem quite consistent. So take that as a successful test. The most controversial factor for me was obviously speedy set being quite close to the control in terms of setting times. Now, although this does seem a little uh, I mean, this doesn't look too good for Speedy Set. There's a few reasons why I think this may have happened. The main reason being that the control was actually mixed up first and Speedy Set was mixed up last in, in the order of mixing them up. I did mix them up quite quickly one after the other. There's around seven to eight minutes bef between mixing up the control and mixing up the Speedy Set. Now that 
would be a good excuse if it wasn't that for the fact that half time was mixed up like one minute before speedy set so now the only other thing that could have been a factor and i doubt this but i'm putting it out there because just to be fair when I was scooping up the powder with the cups, into the cups, and then using that to gauge how much plaster we was putting in, maybe a little bit of air got trapped in there with the speedy set. Now if that had have happened, that might have meant that it was a slightly weaker mix. I don't think that's the case, but I'm just saying that could be the only thing I can really think of. I've used that product before, it works fine. I did think it was a little less fast than the half time possibly, but I wasn't 100% sure. But the thing that got me is that it actually recommends using 5.5 litres of water, whereas the half time only recommends five, and we actually used five. So the speedy set was actually a slightly higher concentration than the recommended amount. So I assumed that because of that, that would make that finish first. But obviously that wasn't the case. The rest of them all finished pretty much as I expected. Extra time definitely had the biggest effect, which is exactly what I've noticed when I've used both of them before, uh, slow set and extra time. Um, so that wasn't a surprise to me, but if any of you was wondering, that definitely seems to be the case. Now the strength test. So the strength test was interesting. It turns out that dropping a pool ball from various heights is not the best way of doing this. Um, I should, probably should have thought of, you know, thought on a little bit, but the results that we got, I am quite happy with. I know that the test, the factors that we controlled for was very good and I was test I was dropping from a consistent high and I consistently hit. The only problem that I did have is a couple of their drops hit in the same place, which which might have affected the result a little bit. However, so it turns out that the additives that had fibers in them definitely seem to be more strong. Uh, and I'm only basing this on the fact that the, the dents from the ball, while still visibly damaged, didn't really break the surface with the ones with the fibers in, which is quite interesting because I actually thought that the fibers, although in theory they should make a difference, I actually thought that they probably wouldn't make a difference. So I'm, it was a pretty good result actually. And obviously the control acted similar to the other two, but half time definitely seemed to get damaged the most when it came to the drop test. So, so the conclusion really for me is that half time is by far the fastest setting. If you want a really quick day, use half time. However, half time definitely makes the plaster slightly more brittle. So there's a bit of a trade-off. There's a bit of a trade-off there. Speedy set comes in at this middle ground where it's not quite as fast, but you trade in the lack of speed for uh, for strength, really. And you can increase the, the quantity that you use of water to speedy set, as you can with all of them, uh, to increase or decrease setting times as well. So you could always use a little bit more speedy set if you wanted it, or less water if you wanted it to go faster. But the fibers do make a difference, and that's been the biggest takeaway for me. So, I mean, the formula that uh, Easy Mix have got for half time and extra time, the actual formula in terms of the speeding up and slowing down the plasters seems to work great. But I'm not sure whether the lack of strength in the plaster is worth the trade of the extra time or the half time. I guess what Speedy Set have been saying and claiming about creating this formula which increases the strength may well be true actually and that's something to think about. So if I was going to choose one of these additives uh, I'd probably lean towards the Speedy Set even though extra time and half time uh, are pretty good. I would, I would like to see them maybe change the formula or add something in there to help enforce the strength of the plaster once it sets because if you're messing around with the setting times you're messing around with i mean the chemical composition of plaster if it's having detrimental effects on the plaster strength then you've got to kind of proactively counteract that and do something to the plaster to you know to balance it out likewise i think that the speedy set and slow set their formula may be slightly maybe slightly different and not quite as effective when it comes to the timings but it definitely increase the strength even beyond the control so so definitely something to think about there please give us a like please subscribe if you want to share it please do we really appreciate that i'd love to see some comments on this one because this is quite a controversial uh, topic i'd like to know whether you prefer speedy set uh, or easy mix products and whether you've used any of them what you think to them whether you've actually compared or noticed any differences and i guess that's it i think that's about it that's pretty much it so thanks for watching and i'll leave it to felix to give you the outro remember to subscribe because we don't we don't want to miss out to to do more videos